Well, lo and behold, we find our first type of problem that uses the GMMG process. And uh, I think what maybe what we should say is OMGMMG. All right, uh, I don't know why I just said that. All right, so this is called a limiting reactant problem. And then we're gonna start with what is a limiting reactant? Well, uh, my abbreviation for limiting reactant is gonna be capital L, capital R. And you'll also see it called the limiting reagent uh, in some places. So the limiting reactant is the reactant that uh, gets entirely consumed. The reactant that gets entirely consumed Meaning, uh, so another way of looking at this is, there is zero or none of the limiting reactant left. None or zero of the limiting reactant left. When the reaction is complete, Um, I'm trying to think what else we need to know about the limiting reactant. Oh, the limit. So the grams of limiting reactant can be used to figure out, to do calculations to all other reactants and products. So the grams, the grams of limiting reactant can be used in calculations. to all other reactants and products. And I think, well, I know, you'll definitely see what we mean, <laughs> um, but, um, but uh, that may not make exact sense now, but it will. Now let's talk about the excess reactant. My abbreviation for that is capital X, capital S for excess. Because uh, we're going to be labeling these from time to time. It's going to be important to be able to do that. So the excess, react excess reactant. So some excess reactant is left over. And because there's some left over, you cannot do really any calculations, well, let's say this, we'll do some calculations with it, but, but this thing about grams of limiting reactant can be used in calculations to all other reactants and products. So uh, grams of excess reactant cannot be used except to determine the limiting reactant. And I, th I think, well, well, anyway, let's see how it goes. Um, but hopefully this will, you can come back to this after we go and do our calculations. And uh, hopefully this will make more sense. Uh, I don't expect it to make complete sense now. Now, um, before we actually solve chemistry limiting reactant problems, I wanna do a limiting reactant analogy. And that is to sandwiches. And the question is, how many sandwiches can we make if given a quote unquote reaction for how to make a sandwich and a certain number of slices of bread and cheese. Now, I don't know how you like your cheese sandwiches. I like my cheese sandwiches pretty cheesy. So for every two slices of bread, I'm gonna have three slices of cheese. That's gonna be one sandwich or one is implied there, we don't have to write it. Now, as you can see, we have 12 slices of bread, we have 12 slices of cheese, and the question we're gonna ask on the next slide, and we'll refer back to this in a second, as far as our thought process, is how many sandwiches can we make if bread is the limiting reactant, okay? And 
Maybe you can just look at this and see how many sandwiches we can make. I think I can too, but let's do our full analogy here and then we'll come back to this in a minute. What I'm suggesting is that uh, how many sandwiches can we make if bread is the limiting reactant? Well, we have 12 bread as our starting point. We're gonna do a unit conversion using our coefficients of the balanced sandwich reaction, which says that it takes two bread to make one sandwich. In this case, these are sort of like the moles, but bear with me. And this tells me that I can make, um, so when I say is the limiting reactant, before we run out. Right, because the limiting reactant is when we run out of something. Before we run out of bread. And when we run out of bread, we will have six sandwiches. Oop, sandwiches. Okay, and that's only part of the process. At least in our thought process, I would like to suggest that in our head, we're also saying, well, how many sandwiches can we make if cheese is the limiting reactant? We also have 12 cheese. And because I like my sandwiches very cheesy, we have three cheese per sandwich, per one sandwich. And if we do the math here, we can make four sandwiches. And we can come back here and we can go like this. We can say, well, there's the materials for one sandwich. There's the materials for a second sandwich. There's the materials for a third sandwich. Then there's the materials for a fourth sandwich. We've got four sandwiches. And we've run out of cheese. We cannot make any more sandwiches. I guess we can make bread sandwiches, but that's not the kind of sandwich we're making here. So uh, what we would say is that uh, cheese is our limiting reactant. And since we have excess or extra bread, bread is our excess or excess is bread. And this analogy to the process here is going to be that when you do the GMMG, the unit conversions that we were just talking about, it is always the smaller amount of product that signals the limiting reactant. So this is the actually the amount of product we can make and cheese, or I guess I can circle the 12 too. 12 cheese is the limiting reactant. I guess we'd just say cheese if it were an English sentence. So answering this question now, how many sandwiches can we really make? four sandwiches. We cannot make six sandwiches. Six is the bigger number. If we tried to make six sandwiches, we would have already run out of cheese. So four sandwiches, that's how many we can make. What is the limiting reactant? That's going to be cheese because it tells us the smaller amount of sandwiches. How much of the excess reactant is left over? Well, we can look at our picture here and see that there are four pieces of bread left over, right? We just went and circled them all. And there is actually a homework question where you do actually circle atoms and molecules to do this sort of analysis. But typically, we're gonna be using moles. And so let's find out how to do the mole process for answering this question.
So how much of the excess reactant is left over? Well, remember when I said grams of limiting reactant can be used in calculations to all other reactants and products? In this analogy, the analogy is going to be that for our limiting reactant, we're going to do 12 cheese. So our limiting reactant, we're going to do more math with this. So we're going to do 12 cheese. And we're going to say that there are three cheese for every two bread in our sandwich. And what this is going to tell us is that with the 12 cheese, when we multiply this out, eight bread are made, used to make sandwiches. And in this analogy, we would say that eight bread are reacted away. And again, we're gonna do just almost exactly the same thing coming up. So we started with 12 bread. We reacted away eight bread and 12 minus eight will leave the amount of bread left over. And that is a very long way to solve this problem. But hopefully, meaning that th this is the end for what we're gonna do right now. We have now answered all the questions. We know what the limiting reactant is, cheese. We know how many sandwiches we can make. We can make four sandwiches, the smaller amount. And we know how much bread how much our excess reactant is left over. In the next video, we'll talk about how to do all of these things as far as chemistry goes.